Welcome to a very special episode of Rhythm Encounter, RPG Fans Music Podcast. I'm your host, Marco Scaspar, Wild Armor on the Boards, and today we have a very special guest with us. He's a composer, producer, arranger, and hails from Northwest Arkansas, not to be confused with Arkansas. He co-founded one of the longest-running video game music cover bands, The One-Ups, and brought together a group of ace arrangers to form a little something called Bad Dudes. Ladies and gentlemen, today we have Mustin in the house. Hello, what's up? Oh, nothing much. How's it going with you, Mustin? How are you doing today? I'm doing all right. How are you doing? Oh, I'm just doing wonderful, wonderful. Really excited to have you here on the show today. Thank you. I'm glad to be here. All right, excellent. All right. Now, there's a lot of things I want to talk about in this feature, but uh, one thing I want to make sure that everyone's clear on. Can you do me a favor and just tell me who the Bad Dudes are? The Bad Dudes is my group of producer friends that um, make video game music arrangements along with other cool stuff, uh, original music, video game soundtracks, whatever. But... I brought these uh, friends together to do some really cool video game music arrangement projects specifically. So they are my bad dudes. Mm, And bad dudes they are. One of my favorite albums uh, is Chronotorious. Absolutely love that album. As soon as I saw that pop up, I was like, I must own this. I must own the physical copy. And I still have that poster right there in my uh, office absolutely awesome. loved everything about it uh, especially uh <laughs> that's great the frog's theme arrangement that one gets me every time yeah that's a good one that's uh by ale sean sean stone it's a really good frog arrangement it's got some death metal vocals mostly consists of riveting <laughs> uh he's being literal folks it literally is <laughs> um but speaking of uh, great arrangement stuff I am very excited about this Earthbound album that uh, came about from the uh, you, you Are Now Earthbound Kickstarter. And the name of the album is Psychokinetic, which is a wonderful album title. I, I love it. Absolutely dazzling. Uh, I'm actually really curious. Like, h- how did you get uh, the opportunity to uh, make this album for this uh, Kickstarter project by uh, Fangamer? I was introduced to Fangamer at a convention called Nerdapalooza in Florida. There was a dude sitting at a table selling merchandise, but didn't have a whole bunch of stuff, just had mostly like a, you know, fill it out on a piece of paper and then we'll send you something later kind of thing. And uh, ended up being uh, Charlie Verdon, who, uh, is one of the honchos over there at Fangamer. And I just loved everything that they were doing so much. And I said, I would love it if you all, if I could do something with you all. And um, I, sometime later, we ended up where Fangamer was our distributor for everything that I do. Um, so that would be the one-ups and bad dudes and my own stuff and other projects like Altered Beasts, which is a classical guitar duo uh, that does video game arrangements. And we've kind of just been palling around. So whenever they wanted to do this, you are now Earthbound Kickstarter. They wanted to do a music thing. And so they asked if I would do an album. Um, And I said, sure, let's do Bad Dudes because that'll be the... the, uh, like easiest, coolest thing, I think. So we were going to do one CD and then they had a stretch goal to make it two CDs, which they smashed pretty quick. So we ended up doing the two discs. Yeah. And uh, like the great thing about this project, um, because originally I think it was just going to be an Earthbound handbook, a documentary, a zine and as well as uh the album for uh the whole project and yeah the yeah the extended uh bad dudes album got achieved like quick and it was amazing because what was it two hundred and twenty five thousand? yes it was yeah that, that's mind-blowing how fast that happened and i was really excited about that i bet you are too yeah it was amazing to watch it the original goal was a hundred thousand and then 
uh, the stretch goal for a second disc was 225. They ended up over 300,000 for the entire project. It's pretty amazing. Mm, mm, yeah, yeah. Like, this is a big project, and you're getting, like, backers getting a slew of delicious swag to go with it. Um, and, well, I want to know, really, like, how's the, the experience of offering these, like, enticing arrangements uh, to this wonderful project, and what makes Psychokinetic stand out from a previous Bad Dudes album? Well, it's pretty sweet. Um, I didn't have to do a whole lot of the hard stuff. Fangamer kind of took care of that, which was pretty cool. I had to just focus on the music and getting the licensing settled for it and get these guys in line to make uh, tracks to make everybody happy. Uh, one thing that was interesting is that there were four slots for backers to do. I think it was a $512 donation that would that would get them um, the ability to pick an or pick a original tune from the Mother series and a style in which they wanted to hear it, and that it would uh, allow them to pick something that was going to be on the album. And so all four of those slots got filled, and that was a fun experience working with four different people on on making what they wanted to hear. Um, but I I, th I think the most interesting thing for me that was that I did so much of the music. I was so much more involved than I have been in the past. I, uh, I really got to put a lot of time and effort into this one specifically. It was pretty awesome. Yeah, yeah. Um, like, in, in regards to those, like, four selections, uh, like, w which ones, uh, like, were your favorite, like, out of the four that you had to, like, uh, choose and, like, uh, like arrange around and help out? The favorite one that I got was somebody from, uh, well, my favorite one that I did was this person asked for, um, uh, the music in the cave, he, wa he wanted a medley, he wanted a medley of these two themes, the cave in the, um, the present, and then also the music of when you actually go into the past from uh, Earthbound. So n there's not a lot of official titles for everything. So um, it's kind of known as the Cave of the Present and that's an another name that escapes me. But then the other piece of it is called the Cave of the Past or the Place. And both of these things are like nothing. There's nothing to them. They're, 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 very very simple uh simple simple things and so the cave of the present when you go in there it's just a little spot in the in the in the, in the great underworld you go in there and you can't really do anything you just go in there and it has this little horn that plays which is actually a sample of the, the first three notes of all you need is love by the beatles mm. they just took that piece of that tiny piece of music and like pitched it up and pitched it down with echoes where it goes bum ba bum because it's part of that piece the french march it goes bum ba bum 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 so it just uses this bum 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 and then it just says pitched down bum 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 so i took that i didn't use the um sample because <laughs> i didn't want to get in trouble any more than <laughs> nintendo did <laughs> And then the other piece of music, uh, in air quotes, is the place, which is when you go back in time after you've been turned into robots. And it is just this weird atonal noise. But there is one part that is kind of melodic with these uh, stacked seventh chords. And so I didn't know what to do. Thankfully, he didn't have a set genre in mind so i really kind of just went wild and just started using these sounds that i had and making new sounds and and creating some sort of like space adventure but i know that i i took that bum ba bum and layered it with like 18 different instruments and i put in the sound of 
cows that were like slowed down that sounded like space beasts and and in the middle it breaks down and turns into uh, like the sound of electricity and and and, and engineering. I wanted to allude to uh, Dr. Ananuts turning the kids into robots and sending them back in time that just peaks with this big choir spell, uh, swell and, and like the sound of glass being broken in reverse. And then you end up back in time and and then there's this just this huge oral soundscape and I and I use those seven chords from that uh, the place and stacked on this huge drum beat and it was just like I was just so excited I, I was I'm most proud of this piece of music than anything else I've done to date because it was me being really challenged because I had to do this for this person and I was able to really be creative about it because there was so little source material to work with so if you were to listen to those two uh, source materials and then hear what i did i think that you can hear how much fun i had with it yeah and you turned it into like uh, like a, a very thematic experience maybe your own little symphony fantastique in the earthbound realm uh <laughs> and uh, to go with that, because that really interests me um, when uh, composers or rangers have to uh, really like bring what they've learned to the table and you know overcome a boundary. I'm curious, uh, like going with that stylistically, you know, the source material to the three mother games uh, OSTs were already over the map. Uh, from what bad dudes uh, chose to arrange, uh, from like uh, your picks. Uh, did you find the arrangers intentionally working with music that fit their style, or did you give any directions for arrangers to push the OST's melodies into new directions in terms of musical subgenres or anything like that? Well, one of the requests, somebody wanted to hear the Hero's Return, which is the one of the ending themes in Earthbound, and they wanted to hear it in a style of music called post-rock. And post-rock is a very melodic, um, usually two guitars, drums, bass, and keyboard kind of sound that usually is instrumental. Uh, there's a band called Explosions in the Sky that uh, makes that kind of music. And I thought that um, my dude Jiggin' John T, which is JJT, a.k.a. John Titterington, that he would be able to do that best. As much as I wanted to try my hand at it, I was uh, pretty inundated with other tasks. So I definitely delegated that one to him, and I did in the best way because he went above and beyond. Uh, uh, there's no way I could have done it as well as he did, and the person that requested it was very happy with it, which is also very awesome. Um, but I just kind of let people pick. I said, this is what we can license. This is what we can't. Here are the guidelines. Um, and and uh, people, people kind of went with what they do best. I did uh, make Dale North um, do, again, an, an extended version of a arrangement that he did for an album a long time ago called... Um, bound together it was a free internet download and a lot of us bad dudes were on that album but that was just a free album that a guy named Joe Cam put together many many moons ago and Dale North did a version of uh, Pollyanna that was a uh, very R&B ballad and at the very end had some of the original vocals from the uh studio arrangement album that only came out in Japan. Um, just some really simple lyrics. And everybody seemed to like it a whole lot, so I asked him to just do an extended version of that, like the whole song, because he did only use a snippet of it. Um, but otherwise, you know, people, I let everybody kind of do what they want. The only time I really did do that as, on a project was um, when we did the bad dudes did um, Super Dodgeball. And then that, that uh, we did an album called No Balls, No Glory. And <laughs> we took the music from Super Dodgeball and then I assigned them by um, 
I assign them by ethnicity or origin country on some level. So uh, it's, it wasn't perfect, but my friend um, Digidis, which is uh, Frank uh, Fantend, um, he, I made him do Iceland because he was the closest to it, being in Holland, mm. um, the Netherlands. And then um, Kaijin, uh, Tim Sheehy, he's of uh, Chinese descent, so he did China. And uh, May's dude uh, was my all-American guy, so I had him do, um, you know, the USA. Um, and then Walid, uh, which is uh, Zyko, he's from Egypt, so I made him do Kenya. So that's the only <laughs> thing, like, where I really, I did something like that. Because <clears throat> at least he was on the same continent, right? <laughs> yeah, but anyway, close enough. Yeah. Yeah, um, so th- that's really interesting, um... And, you know, to actually get into, like, the uh, mother music, um, like, across the three titles uh, in the Mother franchise, do you find yourself gra- gravitating to any one of the game's soundtrack, like, over the others? Like, there are some hardcore fans c- that consider Mother 1 underrated, while other feels that Mother 3 gets overlooked because it's newer than Mother 1 or 2. I think they all have their own uh, merits. Uh, for me... I like Earthbound because I've actually played the game as opposed to Mother and Mother 3. But so much of what is in Earthbound is recycled Mother music. And those initial arrangements are pretty neat. The the Paula theme, um, I'm not sure what it actually is in Mother, but the 8-bit composition of it is very, very interesting. Same with... Um, the music it's called save the miners on one of the things but i don't it's not really in a mine per se it's the music that plays in most of the dungeons the first time you hear it is when you fight captain strong in uh, earthbound mm-hmm. the police chief the corrupt police um but the the way that that one sounds and in, in the original mother on 8-bit is is really cool um and then of course mother 3 has some fantastic compositions uh, gentle rain is just is just mind-blowing and one of the people asked for um monkey's delivery service on the album which is a very awesome uh, interesting uh, accordion tango style kind of piece mm-hmm. so there's just all kinds of great stuff but for me you know i've been listening to earthbound for years and years and years so that's kind of my favorite that's really cool. Um, yeah, I'm actually surprised that the uh, Psychokinetic even uh, like was made uh, available. Like, was it always planned to be uh, like released uh, to the public after the Kickstarter? I think that was kind of the plan. I think there was a plan in place, but I can't remember. And I'm sorry. Before before the Kickstarter even happened, we were talking about doing something. Uh, which is why it ended up being Mother Mother 2, Mother 3. I think it was supposed to be something else, but we put it in with this, despite it being called You Are Now Earthbound. It's still a Mother series tribute, but on the front of the album it says an Earthbound album, which is fine, um, but I, I don't know. <laughs> that's, that's okay. Uh, I, I get your gist, and I'm pretty sure the uh, listeners will get the gist of that too. Um, so, so yeah, like, I'm just really, uh, impressed by, uh, the album itself. I've taken the time to listen through some of them, uh, so, some of the tracks on each one and like, it's like, regardless of what I choose, I just really enjoy it. I think my favorite tracks on the first one, uh, where, where are you? Uh, there, that's it. Find your happy place. Really love mm-hmm. that. So when you mentioned, uh, just like the, the good work in mother three, I was like, yeah, you're right, because that was amazing. And I can only imagine how the original sounds. Because I haven't um, uh, yet listened to Mother 3's uh, soundtrack, and I kind of want to push that back until the game actually comes out, uh, which <laughs> heaven knows when that <laughs> that's going to happen. I-, I think it might be. <laughs> I think it might be, too. Like, what's your, like, under-over day uh, when you think Mother 3 is going to come out in the next five years? I think if we were waiting for it, we'd probably end up being skeletons in a chair with headphones on (laughs) 
I don't know. I just don't think it's going to happen. But I, I think that you should, you know, I mean, I get it. Like, uh, I definitely don't like to jump into something before I, I, I can experience it hands on. So, well, I say that, but sometimes I do. Sometimes I want to know everything about something before it happens. I, I remember when the movie Independence Day came out in like 96. I wanted to know everything about it because I was so excited about it. And I got like all these comics and trading cards and toys and stuff before the movie even came out. And I was totally all about it. But then if like right now I'm trying, I haven't been on Twitter hardly at all or Facebook or anything because I have not had the time yet to take my son and wife to go see Guardians of the Galaxy 2 because I don't want to know anything. I just want to go see it. So I can I can see what you're saying about wait, wanting to wait for Mother 3 to come out so you can experience the music as it happens in the game because it is definitely the most powerful way to do something. But going back and and I was trying to understand the nuance of the original compositions and especially with Monkey's Delivery Service, watching a little bit of a Let's Play to see how it plays out in the game. It's this rather robust or accordion music that is if you were just listening to it on ost it's pretty happy and fun but when it's actually in the game it's it's really it's really like sad and frustrating that this nasty man is making this monkey run around and do all these things it's it's very interesting so i can see both sides of it but i think you're going to just end up waiting forever if you don't uh, <laughs> if you don't uh, go ahead and listen now i bet you know what here just wait a little while longer and hold out and be like you know what i'm gonna listen to this mother three sit down and you listen to it and you start to like it and then boom the game's gonna be, be launched it's all on you <laughs> uh that's funny because um whenever i engage like certain music reviews to a game i haven't um, played uh i'll have to i always go to a let's play of it um because i don't have the time to sit down and play games uh like i used to so i'll mm -hmm. i'll go to let's play you know i don't want to say fast forward but just like skip around to listen to the music get a little bit of context because it's always that like that intimate like relationship uh, you have while playing a game uh and experiencing the music for the first time kind of like uh, for me, it was Final Fantasy uh, VII, uh, One Wing Angel, when finally reaching to that part, because it's like, what? They're, s they're singing in a PlayStation game? No. Mm -hmm. And that was one of the most uh, like impressive uh, moments of my life for game music. And I thought, wow, like this is amazing. Went through with mo a whole bunch of more RPGs to like, get that feel, and I, I just grew to like, just love just love hearing things in context there are times where i you know what uh, like mother three i'm pretty sure this is going to happen i'm going to have to listen to that outside the uh uh game because i don't want to watch a let's play of it i in that case i would want to play mother three and listen to the music outside of it uh, just so i don't spoil it for myself and do my best not to look at any track names because that has a terrible way of spoiling things too uh, yeah it does it's very frustrating <laughs> But yeah, um, uh, Dale North uh, told me a great story about when he did. He played Final Fantasy VII, and you know he was obsessed with it, as most people were when it came out. And he had a one of these big stereos around his TV that had a headphone jack, the quarter-inch headphone jack, for like big headphones. And he was playing it, and he was doing that battle. And then the singing came in, and it startled him so much that he stood up. And that his headphone jack came out, and then the music was blasting at like three o'clock in the morning throughout his house, <laughs> which was upsetting to his parents. <laughs> so it became like it became like amazing, and then it became even more robust. <laughs> <laughs> oh gosh, he, he definitely remembered that moment. <laughs> yeah. Oh man, I think uh, one of my fond memories uh, was just uh, it wasn't so much like disturbing anyone because uh, I already do that enough. Uh, is like recording like it was the, like the the final battle with uh against Gannon in Ocarina of Time recording that on a tape recorder and then just listening to that like like in my room and just like man this is real music Th th <laughs> this is real <laughs> yeah oh jeez oh but I mean, I'm getting sidetracked um but yeah those were some of the things I wanted to like know about with the Psychokinetic album uh and I, I just find that like you like the bad dudes and you you just did a great job with both these uh uh parts and i i just want other people to uh know that as well that's why i invited uh, 
you on the show because I I really think that more people should know not only about just bad dudes but also like this amazing uh, project that just that this Kickstarter even though it was, was 2014 the music is now available you know all right people like now you can actually listen to it and uh, enjoy it and you know buy it and if you really want the physical album it's still there yeah there's there were uh, when I checked last month there were it was down to exactly 500 copies interesting enough and then that's the only way to get all of it um, I have a track on disc one uh, called We Feel Groove, which is Mr. Saturn's theme. And then I have a track on disc two called Bag of Pork Chips, which is His Highness's theme, which a lot of people know from Super Smash Brothers. Uh, it's Porky's theme in that game. And those tracks are not available on the digital album. They're only available on the physical album. So it's uh, important to to get the physical before it's gone because it was a limited edition thing. It was a, you know, a Kickstarter. It was only meant to be for uh, the people who backed it, but there is leftover stuff. Like you can still get the handbook if you wanted to get the handbook separate from what was the Kickstarter in 2014. Yeah. It took a long time to deliver it, um, but it's really awesome. I got a lot of, I've seen everything from it. I've got a lot of pieces of the Kickstarter project and, you know, having this album is a real, real uh, nice thing to have on the shelf. Because it's in this really cool DVD case and everything, and got great artwork. Because the people at Fan Gamer, they're the best at artwork. Mm -hmm. And uh, is there also like commentary on the tracks too on there? Yeah, yeah. A lot of people um, wrote about their experience and stuff. I, I, I talked about it, my experience on every track um, in the booklet. And some people they they don't talk much, so they didn't, they, maybe they didn't say anything. But um, I think my favorite is. Uh, Ail Sean, Sean Stone, he um, he did uh, the hotel music in Earthbound, and I think his liner notes said one time Mustin stayed at my house and my cat ate his cereal. Now he stays at the hotel, and that's all it says. <laughs> <laughs> Which is a true story. Well, I went over there and I stayed, and I I ate this old people cereal that I like called Grape Nuts, and his cat was eating my cereal and and uh i, well, I haven't been back <laughs> but i think if i if i was i think i'm old enough now i would probably stay at the hotel so time will tell uh time will tell um well like uh i guess i have like one more question to ask and this is a uh, this is a question I, I like to i like to know this bit of information i'm pretty sure any everyone else does but if you had to choose, and I'm talking about like right now, right here and then, you don't have to think about it, like it'll pop in your head. If you had to choose your favorite soundtrack, what would it be and why? Um, I don't know. It's shifted through the years. I tell you that um, I used to say Streets of Rage 2 a lot by Yuzuko Shiro. Mm. But uh, as I've gotten older and like found out, you know, a lot of his stuff was the direct inspiration, which is a very nice way of putting it. And you can YouTube like Streets of Rage 2 um, uh, sample uh, versions or something like that to see because there's videos that people make. Like it happens a lot in popular music, of course, like um hearing a piece of music and then finding out that it's something old, you know, I mean, <laughs> like every, like most of the stuff that Will Smith did, you know, like men in black is a old song by Patrice Russian called forget me nots. And, uh, you can find out like who's like who sampled.com, something like that. But hearing a lot of the stuff that Yuzo Koshiro did with the streets of rage two and how it sounds so much like, um, these old, uh, techno and house music from the 90s um, I guess I was a little less blown away by it but um, Final Fantasy 4 is still one of my absolute top favorites um, and 6 is very important to me as well I go back and forth between those but when I, I don't even like whenever I don't know what to do I'm, I'm kind of played out with my thumbs up playlist on my Google Music and I uh, I just kind of want to zone out and work. I kind of always go back to the Chrono Trigger soundtrack, and um, 
And then if I know that I'm just going to sit down at my desk and do and do like financial work or write a bunch of emails, or I also use it a lot for sleep. I think that no one has listened to the Secret of Evermore soundtrack more than I have by Jeremy Sewell. I know that at one time I was like twice over the the, the person who listened to Jeremy Sewell the most on uh, Last FM because <laughs> I have listened to that soundtrack thousands of times now. And um, yeah, I mean, but there's also other cool stuff like the Guitar Room Man soundtrack. Mm-hmm. I love that one and. And uh, uh, I love the Katamari, the Mashi stuff, and God of War. I mean, there's just there's just way too much stuff to pick a favorite. Uh, that's what I've been really enjoying with with my band, the One Ups, for years. Is kind of going through and picking out my favorite stuff. Whereas like uh, the the Mario Paint soundtrack in its entirety is not very much. Uh, maybe 15 minutes of music. Uh, that monkeys tune, the one with the little monkeys, is just one of my absolute pieces, favorite pieces of music, and it was very satisfying to play that with the One Ups back in 2005 on our first album. So I've kind of been doing that, like Ikari Warriors. It's kind of a unsung hero. People don't cover that or play that uh, so much, but that music is. It, it, you could tell that it really wanted to be like an orchestral driving like James Horner or Alan Silvestri style orchestrated like March. <laughs> and I just, I just love it. So there's all kinds of stuff. I mean, I just love music and there's so much video game music that I like. Yeah. Yeah. Like, like for me, like even though I can go like pick one soundtrack that my absolute favorite, I, I do have like after like that, like everything is almost on equal ground because I, I, uh, I, I'm borderline an obsessionist with video game music, so it's difficult. Like after uh, the the soundtrack I'm speaking of uh, personally that's close to me is Noriyuki Iwadari's uh, uh, Grandia soundtrack, specifically the first disc, uh, or the of the first volume, which is all the his orchestral music. Like mm-hmm. hearing that for the first time and even experiencing in the game, uh, it, it, it was very magical very beautiful uh he, he could just write absolute beautiful melody and just capture my heart and i that that really left a massive impression on me and that's that's my go-to music whenever i need a palate cleanse i i go to that or i pick up uh maybe like some uh yuan sebastian box music to uh, listen to that or maybe listen to like a polka and fugue to you know just clear out like video game music but usually it's a uh, uh, the Grandia soundtrack and everything else after that is just uh, amazing. I, I just have this like childlike uh, curiosity and love for like, anything game music because it's just, it's just amazing to me. It's difficult to explain, but I'm sure you you get like a probably like a you understand that pretty well, seeing how you were passionate about these albums as well. Yeah, I you know grew up with um, the the radio in my mom's Bonneville. Pontiac Bonneville playing. Um, so I, I, all these eighties tunes and stuff like Hall and Oates is one of my most influential bands, tears for fears, stuff like that. Um, but when I started playing video games as a kid, like a, like a, I didn't start like really young, like my kids started when they couldn't even walk. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> but when I started playing, like it was something that I noticed and I kind of gravitated toward, and um, especially like Mega Man 3 mm. was a game I played when I was like 9 or 10 and I really enjoyed it. And I, ne- I didn't really notice how much I enjoyed the music until like my last year of high school when I discovered an emulator when I could play it again. And, and then I, I, by that point I had been learning music and I recognized, oh, wait a minute, this is, this is like really good stuff. To where like there's so much stuff happening now. There are so many like video game bands and there's all these great musical acts. Um, there's people doing really cool stuff and there's people, it's just, it's so it's impossible to keep up. And, and because of that, there's just uh, so much material to try and process. So it, it's kind of sad, like to hear a very awesome arrangement of, you know, uh, uh, some, 
music that like uh, let's say another Mega Man like just somebody did this and it's really awesome but it just doesn't like catch me in a way you know and, and I've heard like some really great Zelda mixes that I just you know didn't keep you know, I just listened to it and kept on going but every once in a while something happens to I think uh, three or four days ago my friend uh, my friend Brentelfloss sent me a video because he knows we have a mutual love for Mega Man 3 he sent me a video of uh, I think it was a Swedish orchestra doing Mega Man uh, Mega Man 3 and uh, or a Mega Man medley that started with 3 and it was just amazing I, I got chills for the first time in a long time I hadn't really experienced that in a while where I've heard an arrangement of of this stuff because I've heard so many arrangements and another person that do, does that for me is uh, James Landino this guy is this EDM kid and he's just amazing I heard him do a Hyrule Dungeon arrangement and immediately it was like I, I love this guy so and that's like two very different things like here's this awesome symphonic orchestra and here's a kid making um, Zelda beats in his bedroom but both had this equal power uh, over me from this nostalgia, but also this like good music and this great production and this great arrangement and these you know clever, clever ideas that uh, not everything gets to have. But I think having a really big appreciation for video game music, especially from a little kid and hearing all this stuff, has made me just love all kinds of music. I, I I've constantly find that i'm asked to change the song I, f I feel like i might have the most you know uh varied palette out of my friends and 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 family um because <laughs> my music will switch around from you know a death metal track to a, a video game arrangement that's done on a piano um to you know some hardcore rap and then to uh um, some classical music being played on a theremin to, you know, it's just, <laughs> I love it all, but not everybody can really keep up with it. Like my, like my brain does for some very strange reason. I'm not trying to say like I'm cool or anything. It's just, if anything, it's kind of a curse because it makes it harder to concentrate on one thing at a time. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I, I don't think it's strange at all. That's something I go through as well. Like for me, like one day I'll listen to maybe Gunth Schuller's, uh, you know, atonal music with like a, a string quartet, or maybe uh, Shostakovich uh, piece of music, and then switch over to, hey, maybe I want to just listen to, you know, Mega Man Five. I grew up on that and is absolutely love yeah. that soundtrack. Yeah, uh, that was my That's first like Mega Man. My yeah dude that was uh not my first mega man but i think it is my favorite mega man soundtrack gravity man is oh like just gosh. one of the best oh my gosh yes oh that and um what was that other place uh, i i also enjoyed uh the wave theme uh and just mm -hmm. the title screen music that was oh yeah that was killer yeah dude mega man 5 is uh probably a little underappreciated yeah, it, 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 it's definitely the listeners. It needs recognition. Like, li listen to the soundtrack, please. It's I grew up on it, and I, I can recommend it. Absolutely wonderful soundtrack. Uh, but yeah, no. Uh, thanks again for taking the time. Uh, like, on your busy schedule to chat with us about Psychokinetic and just your experiences with the album and just everything about it. And just just a note for listeners. Uh. Psychokinetic is uh, available through Bandcamp, iTunes, Google Play, and if you're lucky enough, you can still snag a physical copy, which there are, there's still uh, plenty left, uh, at the Mustin Enterprises storefront. And again, I, I just want to thank you again, Mustin, for taking the time to show up on our show and just, you know, reminiscing about not just uh, video game music and Earthbound, but just like, your whole, like, emotional experience with this because you know that's exciting to see that kind of passion go into something and that's what i really enjoy uh speaking uh, with to people so thank you again mustard well thank you very much i really appreciate it and i hope that people uh, will check out the album and enjoy it it's also on spotify and amazon um those are the big ones with itunes google music Bandcamp is great because you can listen to it for free and then you can uh, buy it afterward if you like it. So thanks again for having me, and I really appreciate this time. All right. You're very welcome. And this is Marcos Gaspar, again, Walnarbar on the boards. If you have any questions for us, check us out 
or you can email me at music at rpgfan.com. Be sure to check out other episodes of Rhythm Encounter. And thank you again for listening, listeners. Enjoy. Enjoy.